We just want to bless you. We just thank let you uh, encounter the Lord. You know, here at Picture Revival Center, our hearts so you get revived. Yes. You know, that you become equipped and become the reformation. You know, it's not about, you know, coming in, getting a nice word, and then leaving. It's about coming and getting revived, equipped, so that we can become reformers to the world around us, to the influencers, to the things that are around us. No matter, no matter who we are, no matter our age, no matter where we work, no matter where we live, we are called to be reformers. Say, I'm called and Paul. to be a reformer. Yeah. I know Jesus was a reformer. Yes. Right? Jesus brought reformation, amen? And uh, he wants to bring reformation into our city, into our region, into our province, into our nation. You know, don't believe the lie that says, the lie of the religious realm that says that, oh, you know, it's just going to get darker and darker and darker. Yeah, the Bible says it's going to get darker. The Bible also says that the glory of the Lord shall rise upon you. Yes. The glory of the right blood of the Lord shall rise upon you. In other words, stop looking at the darkness and start looking at God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Too much of the church is looking at the Antichrist instead of looking at Jesus Christ. Yeah. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the word. Jesus is the life that we're called to live. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 It just bugs me when people are just waiting for the rapture. No, we're not called to wait for the rapture. We're called to do the kingdom of God. We're called to manifest the glory of God in our spheres of influence. And as we do, we're not leaving this earth, you know, dead, dying, destroying, destroying, uh, disgusting. We're leaving as a glorious bride, a bride full of glory, a bride full of might, a bride full of the glory and the manifested presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujahness. Hallelujah. How about you? But my life's getting brighter. Yes. They ain't getting darker. I'm not looking at the darkness. I'm looking at Jesus. See, I got to look at Jesus. Jesus. All through the Word of God, it tells us to look unto Jesus. Yeah. Yes. Uh, right? Yeah. Get our eyes off of our situations. Get our eyes off of our problems. And get our eyes on Jesus. Jesus is the solution. Jesus is the way. And Jesus wants to bring it for you. And bring it out of every situation in that. Come on. Don't care what it looks like. Yes. Don't care what the doctor says. Don't care what, what, what anybody has told you. Jesus has the final say. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. In that. <laughs> Hallelujah. The enemy doesn't uh, you know he doesn't have a right. No. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. Graham, you want to come up and share testimony? You want to come and testify? Mm -hmm. Lord. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Yeah. Praise the Lord. It's the Lord. But that is just because I they thought I might uh, share something with you um, that occurred this week, Wednesday. Wednesday was one of my, one of my days, usually I go down to, to the office in Toronto and I work there. Before my, my day starts around four o'clock, but before I leave my house, I usually do communion, you know, so I, uh, that was one of my days I did communion. And uh, I went down, went downtown, went down to Toronto, you know, started work uh, early and uh, had, I don't know, quite a long meeting. And in the midst of, of this meeting, I felt an intense pain in my chest. In my and uh, I, I waited a while, I thought I was going to just you know, dissipated, right? So after a while, I thought that this, is, this is not feeling normal now. So I, I got up, I left, I, you know, I, I got my, my coat and everything. I, I went to the first uh, store and I got myself a couple of aspirin, you know, to take care of natural, <laughs> natural stuff. You know. uh, but I, as I was walking there, I, I could hear the Lord saying to me, what did you do this morning? Amen. What did you do? And he reminded me that I had declared over my life, John 6, where he says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in your life. And he, recall, he reminded me and he said, you are abiding in me and I am abiding in you. So I didn't panic. I was anxious, mind you, but I didn't panic. Mm -hmm. So I jumped on the train. I came down. 
uh, to Hamilton, went to, went to the doctors, you know, and just to stay sure that everything's okay. So they did a few tests. Um, from the test that they've I've gotten back so far, you know, there's, there's nothing that, that they have determined, right? Uh, uh, I just want to take some. But, 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 but I, I wanted to, I wanted to, to, to bring this to your attention that even as your breakthroughs, and I just thought there's no moment to break from somewhere that these things are going to stand for you. You're going to have these challenges. Mm -hmm. You're going to have these challenges that you're going to have to push forward, you know, and, 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 and have a, a, a God breakthrough yeah. in yeah. these things in your life. Absolutely. Um, you know, this, this to, to me today sounds like God Sunday. It's, this is Black Sunday. Yeah. Not a great true Sunday. Yeah. 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 Why? Yeah. Not Jesus, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I recall, you know, as you worship me, I'm at, at you know, as, as like today, when we worship, you know, like every single being, every single bit, what is fiber of our being, yeah. Yeah. was in, in praise and worship to God. Yeah. Do you know? Because we owe God so much. Yeah. You know what? And when I, when I think of, of the things that are occurring, when I let it work, I could have gone wrong. Where, where, where I could have been not in the will of God. Yeah. But here I feel this overwhelming loss. Oh, yeah. There's this crushing love, you know, yeah. that, that without Him, I'm nothing. Yeah. I'm not, I'm absolutely yeah. nothing. Yeah. You know, at, 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 as we, we get into these issues, you know, with our body, with our, our, our mind with our family and friends whatever you know there's always God and that's one that's one place that we can constantly go to and there's peace right but does it change I mean I'm too overjoyed for that yeah. it's beautiful it's beautiful so you know I just want to encourage you Bryce. I want to encourage you you know your body is so part of your body should be alright but you got Jesus so part of your finances might not be alright but you got Jesus so part of a relationship we're not right, but you got Jesus. Amen. You know, when he says, you're going to transform these things. He's, yes, going to transform. I will inform and make it right. Yeah. So, you, you know, when I, 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 I get so overwhelmed by, by Christ's love, yeah. when I think of his goodness, that, you know, I, and, and, I, and, I, and I weep, and I, and I wish I, I, I could, and I, and I feel myself, you know, weeping on his feet, uh, washing his feet. I don't have the beard to try it, but my legs are weird. It's not something I try. But I wish I could, you know. But, but it's a beautiful thing, brothers. Last, hallelujah. A beautiful thing to be in Christ. Hallelujah. Then, take the video. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, before we get into the word, just a couple of announcements. Uh, if you'd like to give, uh, there's envelopes on the table and there's a basket there after the survey. You can now proceed over there and uh, fill those in. Um, and then, of course, Tuesday night is uh, uh, Bible study uh, on Zoom. And, and, of course, at our host at 125 Blackburn Drive here in Bradford. And uh, we'd love to have you. At, and uh, this week's prayer, um, our, our last Sunday of the month, or last Tuesday of every month is prayer. And, uh, and then uh, the following Tuesday, Allison, Pastor Allison will continue on our series on shifting atmospheres. And uh, uh, that's been really good. Uh, you know, uh, she was telling me afterwards, you know, last week, well, you know, I don't know, maybe I spent too much time, and, you know, on weapons of our warfare. But, you know, I mean, we need to know what our weapons are. Yeah. Right? And it was so good. And then, I mean, it was enjoying the, the weapons of our warfare beginning. I understand that sometimes we forget the weapons that are available to us. Yeah. Right? We forget the, the, the things that God is giving to us. And, and, uh, and so, um, so that's Tuesday night on Zoom. If you're not able to attend the house and you want to connect on Zoom, uh, just uh, talk to Pastor Ellison after the service and she'll give you the, uh, uh, she'll get your email and then she'll send you the link um, for prayer and as well for the following Tuesday. Um, <clears throat> yeah. If you have your Bibles there, Hopefully you do, or your phones, whatever you use. I, I, I can't, you know, I, I try to read the word on my phone, but I can't. I don't know you, but I just can't do it. I, I like to open up my Bible. I, I, know, I know where things are. And uh, I think, was it last week? I, 
or two weeks ago, Pastor Ron spoke last week. So two weeks ago, I was trying to preach out of a new Bible. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I've, I've gone back to my old one. Uh, hallelujah. So if you have your Bibles there, turn with me to Mark chapter 2. And uh, just as you're turning there, um, you know, something the Lord has shown me the last few years is that every year, uh, you know, I mean, since I've been pastoring for almost 20 years now, uh, I get words of the Lord for the year, and, and our word this year is that we're being positioned to break through. That's good. Right? See, I'm being positioned. I am just to break through. For breakthrough. Right? See, you're being positioned right now for breakthrough. Thank you. What you're about to receive tonight is going to position you for breakthrough. And, uh, and that's, that's really the word of the Lord. We're going to get into the text in a moment. Um, but what the Lord likes to do with me is that every year, uh, once a month when we do communion, when we, when we take communion, I preach on, the, on another dimension of the body and blood of Jesus, on the flesh and the blood of Jesus. I, 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 I can't just preach a word and then, and then, and then celebrate communion. I, I, I've got to, I've got to get a deeper dimension. I mean, want a deeper dimension of the body and blood of Jesus. I mean, there's never an end to the depth of his blood. There's never an end to the depth of his body, what his body paid for, what his blood was shed for. And, uh, and so tonight and, and for this year, uh, every uh, last Sunday of every month, uh, we are going to talk about healing. And because uh, I believe that God heals, I believe God's desire is to heal all the time. Uh, he does, he, that, that's who he is. And so I'm going to get into that tonight a little bit. And, uh, and take us into a little bit deeper of a dimension. But let's go to here, Mark chapter 2, starting in verse 1. This is, and again, he entered Capernaum after some days. He said it was heard that he was in the house. Uh, Say, so he's in the house. <laughs> right? See, so you got to understand, he's not only in this house, he's in your house. Right? Put your hand on your belly for a moment and say, he's in my house. Yeah, my house. you got to know that he's in you. Right? you got to know that he's in you and that you are in him. And so, so he was in the house, and, and immediately many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them. And even near the door, and he preached the word to them. And, and, and then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roofs where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying, and when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. See, there were so many people gathered in the house and even outside the house that there was no room. Not even the door. In other words, do you and I feel like there's no room for you to hear Jesus? How many, you know, know that we all have some distractions in our life? We have all kinds of images, all kinds of things that we're bombarded with in our culture and our society, and it seems like Jesus is not near. Anybody ever experienced that? It just doesn't seem like Jesus is near. I want to say to you that Jesus is as near as he can ever be. He's living on the inside of you, and we don't have to try to get to him. We're already in him. Say, I'm already in him. Right? And so, and so here we are in this passage, and it's so powerful because... There is this, there's, there's these four guys. These four guys see this paralytic laying on a, on a mat and, and they pick him up and they take him up to the roof and they uncover the roof. They dig out. In other words, they didn't just like, you know, oh, well, you know, just gently, you know, uh, pull the roof off. No, they dug the roof out. Right? They got, see, you gotta start to dig out some things in your life. You gotta dig out your unbelief. You gotta dig out your fear. You gotta dig out those things that, that, that are hindering you and obstructing you from, from believing or from stepping into what God has for you. Right? How many know we all have some stuff we gotta dig out? Right? And we don't dig it out outside of the Holy Ghost. We dig it inside the Holy Ghost and He helps us and He leads us. But we gotta, we gotta ask some questions of Him. We gotta, we gotta declare and say, listen, Holy Ghost, what is uh, preventing me? What is the obstacle that is preventing my healing? Say it's time, it's time. to remove the roots or the ceiling that is preventing my breakthrough. My of healing. I'm being honest. Part of the problem that we have in the body of Christ is we we wait. We like to say we believe, and we don't like to admit that we don't believe. But, right, right. You know, 
You know, see, many of us in the body of Christ, including myself, we believe in our mind. Mm -hmm. Right? But we don't really believe in our heart. Because if you believed in your heart, your heart would bring a transformation to your soul. And if you believe in your heart, as, that, as, that, as, as your heart brings transformation to your mind, your will, emotions, you and I begin to renew and become renewed by, through the, into the mind of Christ, where we begin to impact every cell and every tissue of our body. See, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Right? See, see, see you got to understand that the bridge to the soul from a spirit is your heart. The bridge from your soul to the body is your mind or the mind of Christ. In other words, if you and I don't renew our mind to the mind of Christ, our bodies, our tissues, our nerves, our endings, our, all of our ish, tissues and every aspect of, of organs and stuff in our bodies, even including our heart and our, and our blood system, will not get renewed into the reality of healing. And God's purposing in you and I this year that we're going we're gonna to begin to operate that way. We're going to begin to to bring uh, the, the Word into, uh, not just into our soul, not just into our mind or will and emotions, but into the every aspect of our body. You know that Jesus, uh, when He was born, He was raised. He, he had to learn things like you and I. He had to develop like you and I. According to Luke chapter 2, verse 52, uh, and, and I believe it's verse 42. And uh, it says that he, he, he grew. He waxed strong in the spirit. He, he grew. And he had, to, he had to grow something. But as he was growing, he was actually beginning to grow in the word and allow the word to penetrate every cell and every tissue in his body so that he did not live in sickness. Right. So that when the enemy came to tempt him in the wilderness, he could stand on the word and live by the word. Amen. <clears throat> See, I'm called, I'm called to live by the word. Live by the word. And how many know that can be challenging? <laughs> but you ever find that a challenge sometimes? Maybe a direct here. Now, we're going to begin to dig out some thoughts tonight, some understandings, and some belief systems that have hatched or thatched themselves around you. <laughs> they had to dig out the thatched roof. They, it was a thatched roof, and they had to dig that out. And there are things in our life that have become thatched to us. Uh, and, and, and some of those things are our belief systems that we have. I mean, and let me give you one belief system that, 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 that we have in the body of Christ is, well, it, you, know, it, you know, if it's the will of God, he'll heal me. It is the will of God. Yeah. End of story. If you don't believe it's the will of God, then you've got a thatched areas in your heart. You've got thatched areas in your mind and your will and emotions that need to be dug out. Right? And uh, if, if it is the will of God, why? Why is it the will of God? Because that's who he is. Right? We learned last month that, that he, uh, he is the great I am. He is the I am that I am. In other words, he is who he needs to be and will always be. We, we learned last, uh, last month that, that Jesus was crucified before the foundations of the world. In other words, he was re the reason why he was crucified before the foundations of the world is because God was demonstrating to us that in the eternities of the eternities, he is healer. And when he put time into place, he was still healer. And even in the old covenant, he was healer. And the new covenant, he's healer. And today, he's healer all the time. He does not change. If he was in the eternities of the eternities, the one who restored us and redeemed us before we were even founded in the earth, he already had died and was crucified. And so therefore, he is who he says he is, regardless of what the religious realm wants to think, regardless of what the world wants to think. He is healer all the time. No matter what the result is, he's healer. If somebody dies and they die in sickness, not, it doesn't necessarily mean that they died in lack of faith. Doesn't mean we don't we and we don't have, God hasn't showed us. It just means God's still healer. I got some questions. How about you? Yep. Right. I, I got questions, but I've resolved myself to the truth and the reality that His character does not change. Not that. It does not change. And and I can't allow my situation. I can't allow my circumstances. I can't allow my belief systems to change from the reality that he is who he is. And he does not change. I don't need to come up with some answer as to why somebody didn't get healed. I just come to the resolution, God, you're a healer. 
and I don't understand. I got, I got some questions, but I'm standing true to your character, to your nature, and to your authority. You are healer. You know the right. End of story. Yes, David. Hallelujah. 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 How I many need some healing tonight? And, right? You know, I'm not just talking healing in your body. I'm talking healing in your mind, healing in your, in your emotions, healing in mentally, healing physically. You know, healing in every dimension. Jesus paid the price so that and shed his blood so that we could be healed in every facet of our life. Let me say it another way. Jesus, uh, uh, 39 lashings, and those lashings tore off the skin. The Bible says he was unrecognizable. In other words, uh, his skin was removed. Uh, Jesus shed his skin so that we could wear his skin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So tonight, I want to really just dig in a little bit and go back to the beginning. Everybody say, go back to the beginning. I know you're probably shocked. We're going to go to Genesis chapter uh, chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. And, uh, you know, the more I go back to Genesis, the more revelation I get. The more, the more understanding I get. Because I get to back to the beginning that God has not forgotten what He started. He has, uh, and Jesus paid the price so that we could be returned to, to, to the way Adam lived uh, before sin. Say, say I'm being, I've been returned and I'm being returned into you know, I'm a new creation. Yes, right? You are a new creation. All things have passed away and all things have become new. See, all things have become new. Oh, thank you, sir. Right? See, all things have passed away. Ah, it's the way. But the reality is, is we're also still breaking through some old things. Right? We're still in a world of process. Right? I don't know about you, but I haven't arrived. Hey. Right? I have not arrived. But, but, but I'm on my way. Uh, I, I'm stepping every day. I'm stepping closer. Every day I'm stepping into a greater dimension of belief in, in my heart so that I can confess with my mouth and see uh, the salvation of the Lord in my mind, in my will, in my emotions, and in my body where I break free. Amen? And in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, uh, starting at verse 26, uh, very familiar to us, especially if you've been in this house. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, but, but verse 26, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, God said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So, here's what's fascinating to me. Is that God says, let us make man in our own image. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And if you understand the word, if you understand, there's a divine counsel that God, that God has. And in that divine counsel in that day, where, um, where, um, uh, angelic beings. There were, there were the seraphim. There was, there was, and I believe Lucifer was one of those that was there. I don't believe he had fallen yet, uh, at this point in time. Uh, you know, some can, you know, if you believe differently, that's okay. But, but understand this, that, that, that here God says, let us make man in our own image. And, and he's in a, a, a realm of the divine council. All right. And, uh, and, and so he creates man in his own image. Now, now, we're the only creation in God's image. We are the only creation in God's image. And so in that divine council, I believe Lucifer saw that he was no longer in God's image. And when God created us in his image and likeness, he gave us authority on the earth as well as in heaven. All right? As well as in heaven, and uh, and 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 Lucifer didn't like that, and then of course then we know he rebelled at some point in time, and uh, and and so God creates man, and uh, he creates us in his in, in in his image. In other words, he creates us as a mirror image, as a resemblance, in the same form and in the same shape that he is. There is a three part being. 
Right? I'm going to know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We are a spirit that possesses a soul that lives in a body. Right? We, we, we say our soul doesn't possess us. We're to possess our soul. And far too many of us allow our soul to possess us. Right? And we're all in that boat. Right? Like in different aspects of our life. And then we're all breaking through. Say, I'm breaking through. I'm breaking through. Right? I'm breaking through where my soul is going to submit to my spirit, to the new creation, the new creature that I am, that my soul's in the process of, of submitting because I'm choosing to believe in my heart. Yes. All right? That I am who he says I am. And so he creates us. So think about this. God did not create us with sickness. Not. If God did not create us with sickness, then he doesn't give us sickness. We're in control, really. So when sickness comes upon us, it's not God giving it to you. Trust that. Because he didn't make it. Neither. Bent. See, God did not make sickness. Sickness was a result of sin. And not sickness. Let me say it again. Sickness is a result of sin. Sin. It's if Jesus paid the price at the cross of Calvary for sin, he paid for sickness. Right. Well, I mean, yeah. You cannot separate sickness from sin. But sickness and disease is a byproduct of sin. Original sin. Doesn't mean that when we get sick it's because we're in sin, although there are times where that is. All right? There are times. You know, and we need to seek the Holy Spirit. We need to know. Holy Spirit, what do you, you know, it, it, it is this the reality. And sometimes I think we already know. Okay. Right? But the reality is, is that sometimes the enemy trespasses. Okay. Sickness comes. Disease comes. But how many of the blood of Jesus were shed so that we could be free of the curse? All right. All right? He paid that price. Say, he paid that price. He found her bike. Or, so there was no sickness, no disease, no sin, no evil, no carnality, no curse, and no lack when he created us. It's interesting because man was created as a son of God. Mm. Adam was created as a son of God. If you don't believe me, then if you read the scriptures, the Bible says that Jesus was the last Adam. And he was the son of God. Right? He is God and he was the son of God. But Adam was like a son of God. And we are now sons of God. If you're a believer, you are a son of God. Romans 8 tells us that those that that are led by the Spirit are sons of God. Amen. Amen. But so here Adam in Genesis 2 is told in verse 15, look at this. It says, And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. Keep it now. To tend and keep it. It's interesting because when you understand this, you begin to realize that 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 the enemy came into the garden. Because Adam chose not to tend it. The enemy had no access into the Garden of Eden outside of Adam allowing him to go in. Yeah. Okay? Only access that the serpent had was if Adam neglected his relationship with God. And it's the only access he had. Why? How do we know that? The Bible says God bless him and said, Be fruitful, over his take, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. Over what? And over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Good. Which means Adam had the authority. Mm. And the dominion and the rulership over the serpent. 
Because he allowed the serpent in, he began to listen to the serpent. And as he began to listen to the serpent, he ended up sinning. In other words, the intimate relational flow with the Godhead was lost. But how many know Jesus has restored the relational flow with the Trinity? And it's our role to guard and keep our heart. Proverbs 4, guard the heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues, the boundaries, the fences of your life. Every issue that comes into our life is a result of our heart. Yeah. No condemnation. No. Yeah. Okay? So we're all in this together. Amen. Right? So the serpent shows up, they sin. Ah. And we need a breakthrough. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to suggest to you that our breakthrough is the flesh and blood of Jesus. Yeah. Our, our, the threshold of our breakthrough is believing, eating, drinking his flesh and his blood. Mm-hmm. Therein lies our, the threshold of our breakthrough. Sickness was not designed for us. Right. Thanks. Let me say that again. Sickness was not designed for us. So why do we accept sickness? Good times. You know, sin and we're sick. It's going to get into the garden and set the path. In that same way, he cannot get a foothold in our mind and that's we all over. That's right. That's right. Here, let me let me give you an example of how we accept sickness. Oh, it's fall time. It's flu season. Oh yeah. Come on. Call um, well, Walmart. That's what they tell you. That's a lot. That is tough. And the moment we believe it, we're accepting sickness. I remember I was teaching over in another nation, overseas. I was teaching in a Bible college there. And, uh, and the one of the students that made a comment, oh, it's getting to be flu season. I said, I'll rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Amen. You don't have to accept it. Mm-hmm. See, I don't have to accept it. I do not. We just came out of a season with COVID mm-hmm. in the world. And much of the church still has not returned. Mm-hmm. Which means they didn't believe. Right. They found other things. Fill their life. You hear what I mean? Just say. I believe. I believe. I See, I'm crossing to the threshold. The threshold. I'm feeling tonight. Sorry. In my spirit. In my spirit. My heart is receiving. Heart is t- so there will be a bridge. Be a bridge. To my soul. Soul. And through the mind of Christ, there'll be a bridge where you are. to my body. My body. So healing takes place. He did sings. Go with me to Proverbs 3. One of the challenges, or some of the challenges they're going to go through tonight of what we face mm. that prevents us from breaking through the threshold of healing is really found, one of them is found in this passage, or a few of them. So let's read this, Proverbs 3, starting verse 5. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. I find it interesting over the years how much we in the church actually accept sickness. Mm -hmm. 
I remember even before, I, and as I was going to a place of believing for healing, believing for, uh, you know, that was the will of God to heal, because I haven't always been in that place, still working through some of that. You know, because we all have some systems of thinking. And, and, and I still need healing in different parts of my life that I'm believing for. Well, what I've discovered is, is I do not allow my sickness to prevent me from attending church. Whoa, whoa. We are not many. Good. I will not allow a cold, a flu, a cough, a headache, right. kidney stones, because I've had them. You very long. Blood clots, because I've had them. I had a hernia operation where the hernia was so bad they had to move all my organs back into plates mm-hmm. to the place that they nipped a blood vessel and I became very swollen. I could not sit for months. Mm-hmm. But I would stand up there and I would preach and I would worship and I would lay down because I couldn't sit. I would lay down in the presence of God. Now, no condemnation. If you don't have a revelation of coming, you know, many of us live in fear. Well, what happens if I, you know, give to somebody else? Living in fear. And Jesus never lived in fear of touching someone that was sick. Right. Matter of fact, Jesus didn't tell the sick, go home. Because <laughs> you might infect somebody. The Bible says that Jesus healed all sickness and all disease. All sickness and all disease. Get quiet in here now. Remember coming home from the hospital, we had been in the hospital all night. I had been curled up in a fetal position in so much pain, writhing in pain from acid reflux. Acid was burning in my stomach, burning all the way in my esophagus tube and all the way into my mouth. And it was painful. And we had been in the hospital all night. We had company. We had gone to the hospital. And, and, uh, and, and, and there I am. We finished at the hospital. We come back. We're driving home. And it's church time. And I said, Allison, we're pulling into church. We're going to go to church. It's like, you know, we haven't slept all night. You've been paying. So I'm going to church. I'm going. Sleep's over, Randy. Right? I need, I'm going. Say, 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 I'm going. I'm going. I, and I would go and I would sit and I would be his wife because I wanted to be in the presence of God. I wanted to be in the corporate anointing because in the corporate anointing, there's something yeah. that can transpire. There's something that can happen in the midst because every joint supply, yeah. you know, when one joint's missing, we all are missing and lacking something. Yeah, that's Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah, right? And so I just chose it. I remember I, I, I finished preaching and then I finished preaching, I was. I was struggling with something. I didn't know what it was. I never experienced it before. I was in extreme pain. And I said to Allison, I said, I don't think I can go tonight to, to uh, you know, the church that we had planted because we were pastoring two churches. And uh, I said, you have to send somebody else. I had gone to the first one, and I had put up with it for, for uh, uh, the gospel of servants. And, uh, and I went home, and I turned out I had kidney stump. And uh, uh, later on, uh, the next morning, um, we were planning one to bury for a conference, and uh, and there I am uh, on the floor heaving. But, and uh, I said, Allison, I, yeah, I think we need to go to the hospital first. So we went to the hospital, and, and I'm passing a kidney stone on the floor in the waiting room. Well. And the nurse looks at me and says, I think we need to get you in. I know exactly what's happening. He said, well, praise God. I get in there and uh, I patch the stone. We, they, they tell me till about 10 o'clock that night to make sure everything was good. And uh, we drove home, went to sleep, got up the next morning early so we could be at the conference for like 8 o'clock in the morning. Right? We were back up at 4 o'clock. Why? Because I didn't know I would miss it. Right? And I endured that whole week and, and I had to push through some things. I, I, I was also at that time dealing with colitis and and uh, 
and, 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 and man, I, I was struggling. Mm. But I needed to be there. I needed to be in the presence of God. I needed the atmosphere that was in the, the congregation, that was in the conference. I needed that. Everybody say trust. Shout out to God. One of the areas that stops the relational flow of his body and blood is not trusting the Lord with all our heart. Mm. We think about it in the natural, our heart and the natural can get blockages. Well, our heart in the realm of, of, the, of the spirit, the soul, and in the body has a te- can, can get some blockages, some, some things that prevent us, prevent us from trusting him with all our heart. I, okay, and uh, and we're all still in this process of trusting you with all this heart. I'm not saying I, I got the 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 handle on the whole thing, right? I, I'm still in process, but but over the last few weeks, I've been pressing into this and and, and speaking to my body and and speaking to to every cell and every tissue and speaking to that the areas that I need healing in and and, and all sorts and, and, and coming back to the place at every moment of my day as I'm working through the day, coming back to the reality that Lord, I trust you. Um, I trust you. Yes. Say I trust you. I trust you. Trust, listen to this. Trust is setting one's hope and confidence upon to be secure. Fearing nothing. It can also be frequently translated as confidence, security, and hope. But I want to take us deeper tonight into the reality of this word trust uh, from a Hebrew perspective. Uh, Let me give you an example of one aspect of trust. The word trust in Hebrew understanding literally means to lay flat on the floor without the fear of falling. (laughs) Think about that for a minute. To lay flat on the floor without the fear of falling. Can you fall? No. No. In other words, that's the trust level that God's looking for in our life. That no matter what I, no matter the circumstance, no matter the situation, I'm going to trust and I will not fall. Because he's there. Say so he's there. He's there. See, so he's right there. Anybody ever played that game? You know, where you, you close your eyes and you, and you just fall back? You know, and you got, you know, somebody's there, obviously, right? You know, to show you, it's a, it's a prophetic act to show you that, that, that that's the trust that God's looking for because he has your back. So he's got my back. So I, I... So I want to take us a little bit deeper tonight to this concept of trust. The, 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 the Hebrew word here for trust in Proverbs 3, it's the Hebrew word they talk. And the Hebrew word they talk, it's spelled with the bait, the tape, and the, and the, and the set of the Hebrew letters. And the bait speaks of a tent, and it relates to Jesus and to the word in. Everybody say in. In other words, to trust means I'm in something. Okay? I'm in Christ. So if I'm in Christ, there's no fear. Mm. If I'm in Christ, there's no, there's, there's no lack. If I'm in Christ, there's no curse. If there's, if I'm in Christ, then, then, then I'm free, uh, to, to be able to move as he moves. Okay. All right? Say, say, in Christ. Yeah. Right? So this is the dimension of trust. And in, 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 in this Hebrew word, the letter bait is referring to us uh, at the beginning of this word that we are in him. Right. All right? And so if I'm in him, I cannot fail. Right. Right. Yeah. I cannot fail if I'm in him. Say, I'm in him. I'm in yeah. him. Right? No. So it speaks on, 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 on being on the inside. It, not, this letter B can speak of abiding. It can speak of resting. Yeah. You know, we talked all last year about abiding. Biblical trust then means to acknowledge that I am in Christ. Hallelujah. Now, just because I'm in Christ doesn't mean I'm living from Christ. No. Right? Here lies the action of trust. If I'm going to be in Christ, then I got to trust that he's got it covered. Mm-hmm. 
Okay? Now, part of the problem is that we're still trying to get in Christ. Hmm. You can't get into Christ more than you are right now. How about Say, I'm in Christ. I just got to recognize that I'm in Him and live from the reality that if I'm in Him, I'm surrounded by Him. Yes. Right? I'm protected by Him. I'm provided by Him. I'm, I'm, my provision is in Him. And so if I'm in Him, I'm completely clothed and endued with Him. But if I start to look at fear, mm-hmm. fear will say, you're not in it. No. Yeah. Let me say this. When fear shows up, it's a caution for you and I to come back to the place I'm in. Fear, I'm in it. I'm in <laughs> I, I, I am in Christ, which means I'm in the Word and I'm in the Spirit. But what we do is we hide. We hide in fear rather than hide in Him. You know, King David wrote the Psalms and he says, he says this, he, he says, you know, uh, that he would trust the Lord when he, when he would say to you, he would trust the Lord, what he was saying was, is he would flee out from the enemy and he would run into the presence of God. In other words, to trust means to flee everything else and run into the reality of what he paid for. Amen? The reality of what he paid for. Is this okay? This time. Now, I'm going to say some things here. Not too churchy. <laughs> I'm going to say some things. And, and if you don't have this revelation, that's okay. No, no. Our daughter, when she was young, posturing the car, and uh, she got chicken box. Mm-hmm. And we had somebody within the body that was fearful. And, uh, and so Allison decided to stay home with Sadie. She's got Sadie in the tub, and they're and see, he says to Allison, I need to go to church. And Dad has a word for me. I had to overcome some fear. Allison had to overcome some fear. I didn't care if she'd come. I, I wanted them to come. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Right? I said, come anyway. I don't care. Because I'm not believing that the lie that it's going to pass to somebody else. And then call it next. So Sadie's in the bathtub. Mm. I need to go to church because dad has a word for me. Mm. And she wouldn't let up. And she wouldn't let up. So I says, okay. She packs her up. She comes in. She sits at the back. Mm. And as she comes in and sits at the back and I start preaching, I get a word song. I release the word. And as I release the word, she's already painted a picture of the word. If your children don't speak to you, (laughs) right, in that moment, she had a revelation. Why? Because she had childlike faith. Yeah. She had a revelation. Why? (laughs) I'm telling you, you know the person that was fearful, right? Because she comes up to the altar. I pray for her at the altar. Person that had was fearful, packs up her kids, washed storms in them, all upset and offended and Walks out of the church and is totally offended. Anyways. I can see this as, I, as I'm praying for people at the front. I can see you know, she just storms out. Lo and behold, her kids get chicken box. But it didn't come from our daughter. Fear opens the door. It did not come from our daughter. That was a fascinating thing. She ended up coming and she repented. Praise God. Right? See, see, we can't live in fear. <laughs> see, I can't live in fear. I've got to live in Christ. Christ. Can you speak to the two other lives? Um, 
that, well, God just needed another angel in heaven, so he didn't get a deal. There's one. Yeah, that's a line, too. Yeah. Right? Oh, God's trying to teach you something with this disease. No. They can talk to that. See? Let, me, let me see. Let me say another one. If you think God's teaching you out of sickness, they'll learn something. Okay. Okay. So, but I, I went, uh, learn something. Me. Think about it. If you think, I mean, if, if you think that a father would give you sickness, then learn. Yeah. Find out who he is, and you'll get a reality that he doesn't, he didn't give it. I you always break down I think about you know I think it was dying. The girl is asking him why his name was one. And then they think it was Eric said in their wall. And nothing that all said would likely the get out of the work the word the character is that that was Lori God. Absolutely. And we're in God with your review. You know, let me, let, me, let me see this. How many of Jesus healed Peter's mother in law from a fever? Mean that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Did he say, leave the room? Yes. How many people were in the house? It was full. Mm-hmm. See, we, we, we accept sickness and we live out of fear. I mean, I touched lepers when I was in Africa. I touched lepers, laid hands on the sick. I, I touched people that I don't even know what the diseases they have. Yeah. I think Cheddar. And in that. Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Command leprosy to go. I mean, I saw the devil. Here, the blind see, the cripples walk. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. Right? We can't live in fear. In fear. See, I can't live in fear. Uh, I got to live in trust. Live in trust. So that's the first letter. The first letter is faith. The second letter is the word tet. And listen to this. It is a picture of something wrapped or coiled like a snake. Okay? It's actually the ninth letter of Hebrew, Hebrew alphabet. Or it can be like a basket in terms of its weeds. The wrapping concept actually relates to a baby being swaddled and wound tightly in a blanket. So to trust then is to acknowledge that I am completely wrapped up in the presence of God. I am weaved into his character. I am weaved into his image. I am weaved into his likeness. I am weaved into his relational flow that that wants and desires to flow in me and through me. So to trust is is to recognize that I am in him, and then it is to recognize that I am actually weaved into him. And God again. I am weaved into every dimension of his character, of his nature. And if, and if I would recognize that and believe that and come to a revelation that I am weaved in him, maybe we would encounter a healing more. Man. And then I'm so weaved into him, right? If I'm trusting mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let me say it another way. Right. Um. The word truth, I would say truth. Yeah. The word truth in its most ancient form in the Eric man literally means an umbilical cord. Say umbilical cord. Is that the cord? In other words, we were designed with a spiritual umbilical cord that was never to become severed. When Adam sinned, the umbilical cord became severed. But when Jesus paid the price and shed his blood on Calvary, he returned us and restored us to that umbilical cord so that we could receive all the nourishment that is needed in our life. Right? 
I gotta trust that, that, that if I'm connected and I'm in Christ, then I, that I have this spiritual umbilical cord that is feeding me and nourishing me for my emotional need, for my physical need, for my spiritual need, for my mental need. Every aspect is flowing on the inside of me because I'm connected. Say, I'm connected. I'm connected. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And which died. But come to the last letter of this word trust. And it's the Hebrew letter Tet. That's how they say it. You know, that kind of nasty. Get the flap in the back of your throat. Thanks. Okay. But, you know, when Jesus was, you know, when Jesus spit, that's what he did. He was actually declaring, when Jesus spit, he was declaring, right? He was, <laughs> he was declaring light because that's what that letter means. Oh my. He was declaring new life. You don't believe me? Exodus chapter 12. What did they have to do in Exodus 12 for the, for the destroyer to go over their house? Plead the blood on the lintel, right? On the lintel and the doorposts. Okay, everybody do this. Put your hand up. Okay, go up, over, and down. That's the letter Ket. In Hebrew. That's what they were doing. See, the Hebrews would have understood this right in their day. They would have understood what they were doing, that not just because God said it was like, because he, you know, they, they understood the Hebraic mind, to the Hebraic mind of God, that, that there was this life that he was bringing to them, right? And it can, it can also mean new beginnings, and it can also be a fence or a, a, a hedge of protection, all right? I know that's what the blood does. Right? The blood. Let me say another way. In the Garden of Eden, the word gardener means a hedge uh, about them. In other words, the garden was a hedge. Uh, the enemy had no access in that hedge uh, without uh, Adam allowing him to, uh, allowing the serpent entrance uh, uh, through the hedge. Okay? So, so here we are. And, uh, and this word means fence or protected. It can also speak of, uh, uh, of his life and, and new life and and, 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 you know, but, but let, me, let, me, let me show you this. This letter Ket actually speaks to us about being wrapped in the light of his blood. Mm-hmm. That's why I hate when churches take songs with the, with the blood out of, the, out of their, out of their songs. Mm-hmm. There's power in the blood. Yeah. Right? There's still power in the blood. Oh, yeah, but, you know, we shouldn't talk about the blood because, you know, people off the street, who cares what the people on the street think? Because they're going to get a revelation that Jesus shed his blood. Right? And paid the price for him. So that we could live and have a relationship with him. So trust involves knowing intimately and believing intimately that we are surrounded and protected by his mercy, trusting God is a, abiding and resting in him by discerning his goodness and his greatness. Mm-hmm. In so doing, we are protected, embraced, and surrounded by his covenant of love, compassion, and favor. So the dimension that the word we talk for trust here actually also means to be glued to or welded to. So to trust the Lord is to be completely glued to Him with nothing else. And, uh, you're welding angle. The year stop that to you. Yeah, to you. Yeah, weld. So when we you know when you when you weld two pieces of metal together, each metal gets formed into the other. In other words, when we trust God, our spirit and his spirit become so welded together that nothing can break it. But if there are impurities, okay, if you were to weld two pieces of metal that have impurities, then what will happen is, is the weld will break. Right? Because we, right? And so we have to deal with the impurities that we have. So if I'm living out of fear, then I'm not living in trust. 
Go away. That's all, friend. Let me say this. Do you trust the doctor or your meds more than you trust them? Yeah. Are you trusting the doctors to find out or are you trusting God to reveal that? I'm not saying God doesn't need a doctor because I've been to the doctor and, and the stuff and God does. I mean, Luke was the doctor that wrote uh, the book of Acts, but, but he was in complete trust, right? So God can use doctors to give you meds, but the problem is, is, is sometimes we go to the doctor to find or to give me something. We ask the doctor to give me something so I don't feel like too many people in the body of credits are relying on addiction rather than relying on trust. That does not mean you stop your medication. No. And there's no condemnation if you're on meds. What I'm trying to get across is what are you trusting? Mm. Remember what happened by blood clot? The doctor said, well, you're going to be on it for the rest of your life. I turned to the doctor. I said, no, I'm not. I said that. I don't want to accept it. And that. So he said, well, we're going to try it for six months. So I said, I determined myself at the end of that six months, I will not going to take it anymore. Yeah. And I'm pressing into the Lord. I was pressing into the Lord. It's okay, God, I'm not taking it anymore. Mm-hmm. I actually go to the pharmacy, and the pharmacy gives me a whole month's worth. And I said, no, I'm not buying it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you're prescribed for the month. And I said, no, the doctor said six months. And my six months end at the 15th or the 14th of July. Yep. I'm only taking 14 pills. That's it. Mm. So you're going to have to take that pill bottle back and only put 14 in there. And when, oh, they don't like that. <laughs> so they did. But they're $9 a pill. Uh, oh, oh, it's probably what's there. Right? My guess is that they only took it. Right? I was spending $250 a month on it. Well, like, well, yeah. it. I don't know. Then I was standing on the work. Praise God. Bing, bing. Went to the doctor and a great report. Why? Because it was Jesus' report. Amen. No longer need to be on blood thinners. Mm. Amen? Max. Why? Because I was trusting in my Lord. I wasn't trusting in the pill. Mm. Mm. Another area that stops us, look at this, it goes on and says trust. Trust in the Lord with all your, not part, not 25%, not 50%, not 33%, but with all your heart. And it goes on, it says, and lean not on your own understanding. The word lean not, so this, means to support oneself. So in other words, lean not or do not support yourself. Do not lie in, do not rely in, do not rest in, do not rely in self, do not stay in self, do not abide in self, do not remain in your own understanding. See, your understanding may come, but don't live in it. Yeah. I mean, we're called led by faith, not by understanding. We said it again. You and I are called to live by faith, not by understanding. Understanding comes as a result of faith, not prior to faith. And too many times we live by our understanding. Well, Pastor, you don't understand. I still have the symptoms. Stop living by it, leaning on those. Mm. I, I don't care if you have symptoms. I have symptoms too. I'm not relying on them. I'm not leaning on them. Because I'm called to live by faith. I'm not called to live by my sight. I'm called to live by faith. The moment I start to look at my symptoms, I stop living by faith. Yeah. Faith is not in what you see. Faith is in the unseeable realm, in the invisible realm. I've got to see him. I've got to look to him. I've got to look at his word. What does his word say about healing? Mm. Part of the problem we have in the body of Christ is we don't know what the word says because we don't read the word. And we don't meditate on the word. We don't chew it until it becomes the reality of our life. I am healed. Yeah, I see the symptoms, but I'm standing and I'm speaking to every cell and every tissue and every aspect of my blood. I don't care. I'm, I'm bleeding at times, but I'm here to tell you that, that, that I'm 
you allowing the blood of Jesus to circumvent all that? Nick. Lean not. Lean not. When we lean on our own understanding, it's a revealing that our heart is not connected to the heart of God. And our mind is not connected to Him. Understanding, listen to this. Understanding here means knowledge, wisdom. So when I lean on my own understanding, I'm leaning on my own knowledge, or world's knowledge, and world's wisdom. I'm not leaning on the wisdom of God. There's a difference between the wisdom of God and, and, and natural wisdom. Uh, no. I gotta lean on this wisdom because he does the Bible said it. Mm. Let me let me say this. If I'm believing for healing and I die, I haven't lost nothing. Then you don't fall from my back. Sorry. But if I think, well, this is my lot in life, and I'm not going to believe because, you know, it hasn't happened, and so I guess it's not the will of God to heal and whatever. You know what? Don't stop believing. You know, you can add me. Too many people stop believing because they think oh, that's not the will of God. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. Must not lean on our understanding means knowledge, wisdom. It's one word means to separate mentally. No. The moment you and I lean on our own understanding, we separate ourselves from the heart of God. Mm -hmm. I it. Boston Corinthians, not path. Names, snare. Oh, speak like anything that he trusts in woman. He likes what? More the box. So. Absolutely. Yeah. We have now that no acting for the Lord. No. We're at now. But don't say that our musical like Herod, I will still praise her. Yeah. Yeah. We have to get to the place that, that you know what? I mean, that, that's what, that's what amazed me by believers when COVID get, was they were so fearful of getting cold. Brand of Kool-Aid. Right. Well, what if, uh, you know, because it was fed to us. Right? Fear. It, it was all motivated by fear. I don't care what you think about it. The reality is all motivated by fear. Kids were being taught in the school system that if you go and see granddad, you might cause them to die. Mm -hmm. That's fear. That's what was being taught in our school system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Really? It's all fear wanted. I got COVID. Please. But I praise Jesus in the midst of it. We, we, I mean, we went through the church. Okay. We didn't stop meeting. We kept meeting. Nobody got flu that year. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I never But praise God, they didn't believe the lie. <laughs> we are here. Thank you. To stay in him. Not to stay in our understanding. Goes on. Let me finish up. Goes on here. He says, he says, lean not on your own understanding and in all your ways. Say in all my ways. We're sharing. And no, we have certain ways. Mm -hmm. Right? Right? We all have certain ways. Listen to this. The word ways here is the, is, is the Hebrew word do. And that means course of life. Mode of action. It can mean a journey. It can actually, its real word means to walk. So in our walk. So as we're walking our healing out, as we're walking through the threshold of the door of healing, in the, my course of action must be faith. Uh, yeah, it's like, my course of action must be I'm believing and surround myself around other believers who will stand with me and believe with me so that I experience all of my healing. The moment you pull yourself out of the corporate body, you pull yourself out of a corporate anointing or bring healing into your life. You 
in all your ways, in all your walk, in all your course of life, in all your mode of action, in your journey, acknowledge. The word acknowledge is the Hebrew word yada. Listen to this. The word yada speaks of knowing intimately. It's where, it's where it says when Adam knew Eve and they bore a son. It's that, it's that intimate connection. In other words, bring your walk, your course of action into intimacy with him. And you'll come out with his result. And you'll come out with his result. See, see, everybody say intimacy. Seriously. Wow, Pastor, we don't like talking about intimacy. It's a private thing. Listen, God's building a people who will become so spiritually intimate, not only individually, but corporate. We, in our North American individualistic life, livelihood, we have bought a lie that says, what's well, only between me and God. It is not. Otherwise, why would Paul read, uh, write 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and talk about the, the ear and the leg and, the, and, and every uh, joint of the body supply? Yeah. Right? In other words, we, 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 I believe God's building us to a place where we become so intimate in worship that the glory of the Lord will rise upon us and healings will manifest without us even praying to it. And then, that's where all of it. Yeah, no. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's not about my anointing, not about your anointing. It's not even our anointing. It's his. Right? But I want the glory to show up. I want the glory to, to, to manifest. I mean, when I mean, we planned to the church in Clinton, I mean, I mean, people were getting saved in the middle of worship. No message was preached, nothing. In the middle of worship, people were getting saved. They set free. And afterwards, I got saved during the, right in the middle of worship. I'm like, wow. It delivered. They start speaking in tongues in the middle of worship. Never spoken in tongues before. Remember that? Drug dealers getting saved. Right in the middle of worship. That's yeah. Well, what? He's the glory. The glory showed up. The, the, the glory was released. And, and it didn't have to pray for someone. It didn't have to lead someone to five steps to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I think sometimes we get so in our mode of doing the five steps of Jesus, we forget the reality that Jesus is not a five step person. He wants to encounter him. He wants, he wants people to encounter him, not go through the five steps. I'm not saying that he can't use the five steps. What I'm saying is, is don't rely on the five steps. Just allow the Spirit of the Lord to show up. Say the Lord. And if it can happen for, for people getting saved, it can happen for people getting healed. See that? Hallelujah. Uh -huh. So I got to acknowledge. I've got to listen, listen to the other words that it means. So it means to know intimately, to ascertain by seeing, to observe, to recognize, to instruct, to be aware, to declare, to discover, to be clothed with and skinned with and endued with. In other words, bring your walk to a place where you become so clothed and endued with him. No. That as you're clothed and skinned and endued with him, yeah. every path in your life becomes a direction of the whole. Yeah. When you get free, you get sealed, you get delivered, you get set free. Mm -hmm. Mentally, physically, spiritually, in every aspect. He goes on, he says, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Say, he, he. shall direct your paths. Notice the, 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 the plural form of the word paths. Mm -hmm. There's only one path to Jesus. Oh. Right? Only one path to the Lord. There's, there's no other path. It's, it's Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. 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 Right? It, say Jesus. Jesus. Right? There's only one path. But there's many paths inside of us that God needs to bring direction to. See, there's pathways uh, from your heart. I mean, your natural heart, that's a pathway. Yeah. Right? Has, has uh, arteries and capillaries and veins and vessels and all the things to, to bring direction to your body. 
And so there's different paths that, that, that need to occur. So, so from your heart, there's a path into your mind. There's a path into your will. There's a path into your desires and, and into your emotions. And, and God wants to direct every pathway uh, through his blood and allow his blood to penetrate every pathway that's found with the inside of you and inside of me so that we walk in the freedom and the healing that he did, that he paid for. By his shed blood. The word paths there, or let me let me say the word direction. The word direct means to make straight, to be pleasant, prosperous, to please, to make upright and bring harmony to. Yeah. So he wants to bring harmony in your path. So he's bringing harmony right now in my path. See, he's breaking some mindsets that you have. He's in, 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 in bringing prosperity uh, from your spirit, uh, through your heart, into every capillary and vein and vessel and artery that goes into the realm of your soul, mind, will, and emotions, uh, to the place that it begins to impact and go into every cell and every tissue and every vessel. Uh, his blood is flowing even right now into every vessel of your body. In the name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what he's looking to. That's what he's trying to bring to you. That's what he's trying to get into. That every area of our soul and body becomes trodden. Yes. And, 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 and the caravan of, of, of his, uh, what? The caravan of what is what paid for, the caravan of, uh, of his flesh, the good news, and the, and, 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 the, and the reality of being a new creature in Christ, and all things, old things have passed away, and all things have become new. That, that, that caravan wants to penetrate into your heart, uh, and, and, and as that caravan penetrates in your heart, it leaves the deposit, uh, it leaves the deposit of, of what he paid for in those areas, uh, so that it begins to recognize, that uh, your mind begins to recognize. Wait a minute. No, I have the deposit of the Lord I'm seeing for this crowd and that's not. I'm going to need a deposit in my emotion. I'm going to live by my emotion. And my emotion is going to be directed by the deposit that has been placed within me. Hallelujah. And then into my into my will and desires and intentions of, of my heart, there's deposits of his blood. There's deposits of his of what his blood paid for. Because the caravan is going through and imagining everything that I need into the place of my body. That every vessel and every organ and every tissue and every uh, every every cell is being impacted by the caravan of uh, 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 trusting in the Lord and not leaning on my own understanding, but acknowledging Him in every way, so that He can bring the caravan into those areas of my life. Are you ready? Shine, let's stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Orn and Grant, would you mind uh, just passing around the uh, uh, plant, open up the, uh, the crackers there? Those that are watching online, and you got some bread, some juice out of it. doesn't matter what kind of juice you got. It don't matter what kind of bread you got. It's not about the bread. It's not about the juice. Uh, it's about the living the bread. It's about the living life of the sheep. Hallelujah. And wants to be a caravan in your life tonight. So. Thank you. We're going to partake tonight together. And then after we partake tonight, I'm going to open up the altar and you're free to come. You're going to in your body. You, can, you can sit at the front, sit at the front. And we're going to lay hands on you and believe God to bring that restoration to your body, to your mind, to your will, to your emotions. Very healing is manifested in the name of Jesus. And Jesus gets all the glory. Heaven is here. Christ is here. And he wants to bring freedom. And he wants to bring life. And life for abundance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's bring healing to your body. He pays the price. And bring every single person on the face of this planet. Hallelujah. 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 I speak to kidneys right now. I speak to, to, to ailments. I, I speak to every aspect of disease. I speak to it right now. And I declare that the caravan of his body and blood is going to begin in deposit so healing power right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs>
Hallelujah. 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 Just lift up a breath. Just lift it up. Just lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus. We thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you for the anointing that was upon Jesus. We thank you for the anointing that was upon the word. That the bread speaks of the word. We thank you for the word tonight, Lord. And we declare that, Lord God, that we receive. We take yet every dimension of that word right now in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. And we thank you that on the night that you were betrayed, you took the bread, you broke it, and you gave it to your disciples. And I'm sick. Take eat. We consume this. And in the consumption, Lord, we pray that there would be a deposit. Those. Yes. There would be a deposit in the every facet of our soul because we're choosing right now to trust in your flesh, to trust that, that your flesh uh, was given for us to take and to grab a hold of and conceive on the inside in the mighty and power of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Let's eat together. Thank you, Jesus. What are you doing? Father, we take it in. Father, let it become a deposit. Yes. Good. Let it become formed. Good one. Let it become shaped uh, yeah. into every cell, your cell work. in every tissue, that the word would become our flesh, the flesh of our organ, the flesh of our heart, the flesh of our will, the flesh of our emotion, the flesh, the reality, the good news, uh, the skin of the light. In Jesus' name. One morning the Lord spoke to me in our service in Concord, and he said, in the middle of worship, he says, I want you to dump all the juice, and I want you to dump it in a big bucket. <laughs> And I want you to stand in front. I want everybody to come up and wash their hands in the blood. And I said, Lord, do you realize how sticky that is? Do you realize how people are going to think? Do you realize that it stains? How's that work out for now? And the Lord said, do it anyway. And so I got out of myself. Middle of worship, I went to the kitchen, I dumped all the juice back in, got more juice out, poured it in a bucket, got a hand towel, set it at the front. Mm-hmm. After worship, God and then I preached, and then God said, Now I want you to do it. Mm-hmm. And I put it right at the front. And I said, Okay, this 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 morning, we're not gonna drink it, we're gonna wash in it. Well, I mean, so I'm gonna... How about it? Mm-hmm. You should have seen the people's faces. <laughs> yeah, well, like yours right now. We get Right? Yeah. And I said, this is what God said to do, and so we're going to do it. And there's a woman that sat at the back, and she talked to me afterwards, and she did not want to do it. She thought it was stupid, foolish. Why would I even do that? It's not in the Word of God. Something drew her to go and do it. She was the last one in the line, and she came up, and she put her hands in. And after she put her hands in, I came out, and I put my hand, the towel around her hands, and she said to me, she said that, it was like you were Jesus. Whoa. And Jesus was washing my hands. I'd never encountered Jesus in that way. And she had tears rolling down her eyes because she said, I did not want to do it. And I chose to do it. And she encountered Jesus. I wasn't Jesus. But the reality is, is there's power in the blood. Yeah. So tonight as we drink tonight, there's power in his blood. Now this isn't his blood, this is a representation of his blood, but, but understand that, that, that we're decreeing and declaring that his blood is going to renovate uh, and, and bring a restoration into our lives. Yeah. But there's a, a restorative deposit that's going to take place as we partake tonight to bring healing into whatever areas we need healing in. So, Lord, we thank you that you said you, did those, you said, 
Take this and drink this, all of you. For this is the blood that ratifies the new covenant. Mm, it's true. Do this for our embrace of me. And so tonight we're doing this not out of tradition, no. but out of the reality that there's healing Man, this in this intimate meal. There's a healing in, in his blood. Mm, yes. So, and he wants to bring direction as you partake tonight. He wants to bring direction really? into the paths of your life. Encryption. Let's drink together. You need healing in your body, in mind. Yeah. Lord. Just come forward and don't feed her. We're going to like end some in a minute. I don't care what the ailment is. You don't need me to tell me. I'm just going to pray. And Jesus is going to heal. How do I know that? Because he said he's you. I'm trusting. Yeah. So I'm trust. Say this, baby. I'm trust. I'm trust. See, your step of faith tonight is a prophetic act of declaring to the Lord, I'm trusting. I'm trusting. I'm trusting. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 